This is a great spot to camp. I mean, look at these views. Wow, look at this. Woo! Doesn't get much better than this. This is insane. Do this. Hey guys, Colton here. In this box, I got a brand new Gen Falcon 2, and I'm gonna take it fly camping tonight and give you my thoughts on it. Let's get this thing unboxed, check out some of the features it has, and uh, then we'll get into the air. Oh, that new wing smell, lovely. There's the risers. So this is new. They have a handle on the speed system here and uh, it, has, it is now magnetized so it doesn't just flop around. So that's really nice. It's got a nice roller bearing on the, uh, on the speed system as well. So it'll slide back and forth really nicely. Hark and pulley here on the, uh, on the brake line rolls through there really good. And it also comes with the 2D steering tied in. The lines here are all sheaths, it looks like, until you get up to the, the very top. Pull this thing out the rest of the way and take a look at it. I've owned quite a few Gen Wings over the years, and I always appreciate how they pack them and uh, all the little attention to detail. So it comes with uh, stickers and repair tape, as well as a compression strap. And if you guys didn't already know this, when you order any Gen Wing, or actually any wing from Superfly, you get your choice of one wing bag. The first one here, is called the Concertina Compress. That one's really nice if you're doing like hike and flies or want to pack it down and travel with it. Next, we have just a standard Concertina bag. And the third bag option is the Fast Packing Light Bag. That's really nice if you're uh, just wanting to throw your wing in a bag real quick and haul it up. And then the final option is this x Light Rucksack. It's a backpack as well. Whenever you place an order for a Gen Wing, you get to choose one of those four options and uh, we'll include it for free. Yeah, this is a 22 meter glider and it weighs uh, about 11 and a half pounds. It has a weight range of 85 kilograms to 130 kilograms. Kite's super nice, not trying to overfly me. Look at that, I can let it fly quite a ways in front of me and it doesn't want a frontal. So the Falcon 2 is a reflex glider. It has nylon ribs in the leading edge of the wing. And uh, as you can see, it's very solid. What a beauty. So the motor I brought with me tonight is the PAP Tynex. A cool thing about it is it breaks down super quickly and quite small as well. So I can actually fit it in the trunk of my car. This will be the first time I've ever actually put it together, kind of get an idea of how long it actually takes. It only took me like three minutes. And like I said, that was my first time ever doing it. Super quick and easy to put together. Great paramotor if all you have is a car or you wanna do some traveling, um, highly recommend this PAP. All right, well, I couldn't take off from that other location that I was at, so I drove out here to this park and I'm gonna take off here instead. So I'm gonna quickly get my wing and paramotor set back up. We'll take off and get up into the mountains. Before I go any further, I guess I should introduce myself. Um, some of you may know me, but I'm guessing that probably a lot of you don't. My name is Colt Wanger, and uh, I recently got hired by Chris at Superfly to be uh, their full-time videographer. This is the kind of stuff I do. I don't live in Utah. I live up in Idaho, and uh, 
I do a ton of fly camping up there into uh, really remote locations. And so this is kind of my thing. So Chris asked me if I wanted to take the Gen Falcon out and uh, do a review on it. So I figured what better way to test a cross country wing than a uh, fly camping mission. And so far I'm really liking what I feel. It's very responsive. As I said before, this is a 22 meter. So um, I'm heavily overloaded on it with uh, with all of my camera gear and camping gear. So um, as you can see, it's not, it's not oscillating at all. Let me go into a turn and then just dump it and see. All right, so we roll back without correcting at all. So it feels very stable. If you put it into an oscillation, it will kind of continue to oscillate for a little while. As you can see, I'm returning back to level here. I really, really like these, this style of toggle. It feels very good in your hand. It might take a bit to get to the top of this mountain. We're barely climbing here. I'm full throttle and we're just creeping up the side of it. But yeah, I really like how they, uh, they put magnets on these trimmers. I always hate how the, how the old ones would flap around. I'm just not making any ground. <laughs> I think the reason it's not giving me much power is because it had a smoke system on it. And uh, I was flying it this morning and uh, the smoke system, the, the bottle for that holds the oil fell off and went through the prop. As it ripped it out, it ripped the, uh, the little connector that goes into the exhaust. And so there's a tiny hole in the exhaust where the, uh, where the smoke port is. And I think that's why it's not giving me full power is because, because of that little hole. I've had the throttle pegged for like 15 minutes now trying to get up here. Ooh, there's some lift. I'm gonna turn in that for a second. I'm trying to keep my turns as flat as possible. I don't lose any height. getting rowdy. There, we're finally getting up. Look at this. That is beautiful. Well, there's all sorts of spots back here I could land. This Falcon 2 is just saying rock solid. It feels very, very good, like in that turbulence. Very confident in firing. Now if we can just find a place to land. Oh yeah. There's definitely some spots back there, but I don't really want to be back in that valley because if the wind's coming up the front side in the morning, I'm going to be launching right in the uh, right in the rotor. That's the thing with fly camping is uh, it's more about finding a place that you can take off again because you can land in a lot in a really tight area, but you need a lot more room to take off than you do to land. That sagebrush looks pretty tall and thick. You know, there's a spot that maybe looks doable. Let's do a low pass just to see. We gotta come in a little bit lower this time. Woo! There we go. Oh, that's a little rough. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> we made it. We did it! This is so beautiful, though. I think I'll pack my stuff to the top, and then we'll uh, camp up on top so we can get a good view of the whole valley. This is heavy. It doesn't get much better than this. I mean, look at that backdrop. That is insane. The Falcon 2, even though I hit some pretty good turbulence, it felt just rock solid. I felt super safe. Well, I'm gonna put the drone in the air and get some shots and then probably start setting up camp. There goes the last little bit of light. 
I've missed the mountains. I haven't gotten into them at all since I've been down in Utah, so this is so great. I better set my tent up and do that while I still have some light. So something cool that I brought with me that some of you may not have uh, seen before is the paramotor tent. And this is actually made by Gen Gliders. You actually use your paramotor as the frame for the tent itself. I've been using it for several years now and uh, I really, really like it. It weighs uh, 1.2 kilograms, so just under three pounds. Not only does this tent use your paramotor as the frame for the tent, but it also doubles as a cover for your paramotor. So it's really nice in that regard. But um, yeah, unfortunately, there are no stakes with it. Um, I should have checked the package before coming. Chris gave me this tent real quick to use because I left mine at home, but I have no stakes. So I'm just gonna have to uh, use some rocks or some sticks and jam them into the ground because uh, otherwise it's not gonna stay open very well. So yeah, there it is with the cover on. As you can see, it uh, covers the whole thing really nicely. And then uh, got a big door here on the front. But I'm not gonna put that on tonight. It's pretty warm out, so I don't really need it. Oh man, look at this. See the lights from the city? This is so beautiful. This is why you need to learn how to fly a paramotor. Cause you can get to amazing places like this. Well, I brought my jet boil and uh, a mountain house with me, so. I'm gonna cook that up. Got some hot chocolate. It's gonna sit up here and enjoy the last little bit of light and uh, eat some good food. Well, dinner really hit the spot. Uh, had a pad thai with chicken, mountain house, and uh, I'm feeling really good. So happy to be up here. It's getting pretty late and uh, it's getting too dark to shoot anything, so I think I'll probably go to bed now and hopefully wake up to a nice breeze coming up this mountain so I can easily take off. I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning guys, uh, it was a long night. It got kind of cold and uh, you know, I didn't sleep real well like I normally don't when I'm camping. Yeah, I'm pretty tired, but that's all right. It was fun. At around one o'clock last night, it started getting really windy and that had me kind of worried because I figured it was gonna be really windy this morning because of that, but it's not at all, it's completely dead. So I think I'll get up and uh, go make some hot cocoa, watch the sunrise and then uh, Maybe start packing up and looking for a place to take off.
hot chocolate hit the spot. I'm nice and warm now. So I'm gonna go down here and look for a place to take off. This is the same spot I landed. If there's no wind, I'll probably take off down here. But if there's wind, I'll probably take off up on that hill so I can kind of run downhill a little bit. But I don't want to launch up there without any wind because the sagebrush is uh, fairly deep. I think I would end up tripping if I had to do a no wind launch there. This is kind of the area I'm thinking right here. It's a nice grassy meadow. There's no sagebrush. The only issue is it is kind of tall grass. I think I'm gonna go pack up. I might just wait around and see what the wind does. I definitely would like some wind because heavily overloaded at 9,000 feet. I don't think it'll be too bad uh, taking off down here. Um, that Falcon comes up so easy. I'm feeling a lot more confident about taking off down there. The only hard part will be running through some tall grass. I'm just going up here now to get my camping gear, carry it down and then I'll get the motor and then we'll get in the air. Do this. Woo! That was a close one. Almost got that bush. Let's do some little passes over the top here. Make sure we didn't forget anything. I don't see anything. We're good. I'm really glad I was on this uh, Falcon 2. It launches so easy. That is beautiful. Look at these cliffs. They are massive. Feels so good when you fall off a safe flight camping mission and everything goes according to plan. Let's see what kind of speeds we're getting. So trimmed all the way in, it looks like we're getting about 35 mile an hour. So let's turn, go back this way and see what we get. So this way we're getting uh, right around like 31. Now let's uh, dump the trims and see what we get. Getting around 45 this way. Let's turn back. This way, we're getting around 40. So it looks like uh, with trimmed in, your speed's about uh, 30, around 33 mile an hour, and uh, trimmed all the way out, your top speed's around 43 mile an hour. Now, I would use the speed bar, but I'm getting a little low on gas, and uh, I would wanna, I wanna climb up a little bit higher than this to use it. Pushing speed bar all the way, I'm guessing, would increase us by another eight to 10 mile an hour. So it has a pretty big speed range, 33 mile an hour to probably about 53 mile an hour. Well guys, if you are looking to get a wing that is excellent for fly camping or cross country flying, I would definitely recommend the Falcon 2. Also, if you're wanting to get anything else that you saw that I talked about in this video, hit us up at Superfly. You can visit us at superflyinc.com. We'll be more than happy to assist you with the purchase of some gear or answer any questions you might have. Or if you're looking to get into the sport, hit us up for training as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. And 
uh, I'll see you next time.